is now we are going to learn a new content, a new chapter, indices. Now your indices is based on certain laws. We say laws of indices. To start off with, the very first law. The first law of indices says a raised to m into a raised to n. Answer is a raised to m plus n. So what is the very first law state? It states that a raised to m into a raised to n. Answer is a raised to m plus n. If I want to understand this law, why an example? So let me say example. If I am being given 7 raised to 5 into 7 raised to 3. Answer is 7 raised to 5 plus 3 which is 7 raised to 8. So what is the law stating? The law states that whenever the bases are equal, you can say it is a raised to m into a raised to n. We simply need to sum up their parts, a raised to m plus n. Care needs to be taken, the basis needs to be the same. So in the example is what we have mentioned, 7 raised to 5 into 7 raised to 3. Are the bases same, 7, 7? Yes. Their power needs to simply get added up, 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 is 7 raised to 8. Now the question arises that every time should we have the powers as positive? No, not necessary. The powers can be negative as well. So let's take one more example based on that. So say example number 2 where we say it is say 7 raised to minus 5 into 7 raised to minus 3. Answer shall be 7 raised to minus 5 plus of minus 3 which is 7 raised to minus 5 minus 3 7 raised to minus 8. So here in the very first example we had two positive parts. In the next example is what we had two negative parts. Now is it possible that we can have one positive and negative? Yes, we can indeed have that. So say for example 7 raised to 5 into 7 raised to minus 3. Answer shall be 7 raised to 5 plus of minus 3 which is 7 raised to 5 minus 3 7 raised to 2. So this particular law can be easily be applicable for all the parts, all the kinds of parts. Maybe both the parts being positive, both the parts being negative, and either could be positive or negative. Now, the second law is, I have divided the second law into two parts. Law number 2a, I shall give you the answer, why have I, why have I divided law 2 into two parts? Law 2a, and then we shall see law 2b also. Now, what is law 2a? It says that a raised to m into a raised to n, answer is a raised to m minus n. Over here, it was multiplication. Over here, it is division. In multiplication, we had summing, we were summing up the parts m plus n. In division, we are subtracting the parts m minus n. The condition over here, as I stated, why have I made this as 2a and I shall be making 2b also because yeah, the condition is m should be greater than n. The value of m should be greater than that of n. So let's take an example based on that. So what is an example? Example over here, I shall say 7 raised to 5 divided by 7 raised to 3. Now can you say this acts as m and this acts as n? Is m greater than n? Yes. So answer will be 7 raised to 5 minus 3 which is 7 raised to 2. Now how we discussed in the very first case, how we discussed in the very first case that both could be positive, both could be negative or either positive or negative. Likewise both could be positive, we can also have one negative, one positive and we can have both the negatives as well. Let's take one positive, one negative whereby which the picture will be much and more clear. Say 7 raised to 5 divided by 7 raised to minus 3. Now what is the thing going to be? Over here we shall say it is 7 raised to 5 minus this sign belongs to the definition which or our laws of indices definition m minus n. So this sign is that. m minus is the definition ka sign and our n itself is minus 3. So answer will be 7 raised to 5 minus of minus plus 3 7 raised to 8. This is what the answer shall be. Now what was the second b part of law number 2? The B part of law number 2 says, it is A raised to M divided by A raised to N. Answer shall be 1 upon A raised to N minus M. Students, please pay attention. Here it is A raised to M divided by A raised to N. Answer is A raised to M minus N. Over here, A raised to M divided by A raised to N. Answer is 1 upon A raised to N minus M. The condition over here is N should be greater than M. Your N should be greater than M. Say, for example, 
If I say 7 raised to 3 divided by 7 raised to 5 is my n because this is acting as m and this is acting as n. Is my n greater than m? Yes. The answer shall be 1 upon 7 raised to n minus m 5 minus 3 1 upon 7 raised to 2. Again, I would like to say both the positive paths are going to get workable. Minus paths are also and one positive one negative. It is going to work out in all the kind of conditions. Now I'll come to this particular law after some time. In this session only, I'll come to this particular law. That is, students fail to remember this one. We have an alternative for this. We have an alternative for this law. And I shall come. I shall come in this session itself. Let us take the third one. The third law says, A raised to M, the whole raised to N. Answer is, A raised to M into N. A raised to M. The whole raised to n, answer is a raised to m into n. Example, if I say 7 raised to 5, the whole raised to 3, answer shall be 7 raised to 5 into 3, which is 7 raised to 15. Again, it's not necessary that m and n should be positive only. Either of them can be positive, both can be negative, or one positive, one negative. So let's take one case where by which they are one positive, one negative. The answer shall be 7 raised to 5. The whole raised to minus 3, answer shall be 7 raised to 5 into minus 3, 7 raised to minus 15. Now students, once again, I can, I can do something more than this particular step also. We will come to this particular point in this session itself. As I stated, that two things is what we are going to look at. Once we do all the laws, there are two things is what we will once again highlight it. One is law number 2b, another over here, which I have written as 7 raised to minus 15. We will come back to this point. Some number, or law number 4. A raised to 0 is 1. Anything raised to 0 happens to be 1. Say, for example, if somebody says 7 raised to 0, answer I shall be saying it's 1. I shall not necessarily that every time your base should be positive. You must be thinking that every time sir has taken the base as positive. Not necessarily that base always needs to be positive. The base can also be termed as negative or base can be negative. So let me say another example as minus 2 by 3 raised to 0. Again it is 1. Not necessarily that the base always has to be an integral value. It can also be a fractional value. So minus 2 by 3 raised to 0. Answer is 1. So what we say in general? In general we say anything raised to 0 is 1. We go for the next law. Law number 5. What is law number 5 trying to say? A raised to minus m is 1 upon A raised to m. Students be very careful. A raised to minus m is 1 upon A raised to m. Or one can say A raised to m is 1 upon A raised to minus m. Can you see the difference in the signs? A raised to a negative part becomes 1 upon A raised to a positive part. And A raised to a positive part becomes 1 upon A raised to a negative part. Now, many a times is what? You need to apply this particular law, rather this one. It is this particular law applies the most rather than this one. So as of now, we are not going to take this. It's only for your understanding I have given it. So if a raised to minus m is there, we can say it is 1 upon a raised to m. So example is if somebody says 7 raised to minus 3, I can always say 1 upon 7 raised to 3. a raised to minus m is 1 upon a raised to m. The other example could be, Minus 2 by 3 raised to minus 3. Minus 2 by 3 raised to minus 3. Answer will be 1 upon minus 2 by 3 raised to 3. Now students must be thinking over here that the power cast sign which was negative has become positive. So is the base sign going to be positive? No. The base sign remains as it is. So whatever the sign is there in base, the sign doesn't change. If it were to be plus, it will be plus. If it were to be minus, it's going to be minus. So here one needs to be very, very careful what sign, what sign is getting changed. The sign is getting changed is only of bar, not of the base. Now I was saying that we need to, we need to uh, correlate some previous questions. Now if you happen to see here what I'm getting, 7 raised to minus 15, don't you think so that I can correlate this as a raised to minus m? My answer shall be further taking this law into account. Taking this law into account, 7 raised to minus 15 is 1 upon 7 raised to 15. It is always advised to keep our answer with a positive part and not with a negative part. It is always advisable to keep our parts with a positive one and not with the 